Anyway guys, I'm up in this plane and it feels like it's falling to pieces. And I'm going to Cardiff, crazy, and we start tomorrow. Training in the afternoon guys, with my new club, let's see what happens. So, how's it all going with you boys, all good? If in an hour and a half you haven't heard from me, I don't know if they are going to send someone to look for me because they won't find me, but you will know. Man, I'm scared. This was the last time the friends and family of Emiliano Sala ever heard from him. It was as if he was foretold of his own demise, as on January 21st, 2019, the Argentinian striker lost his life on that plane. The single-engine aircraft took off from Nantes, but never made it to Cardiff, where Sala was supposed to play the coming years of his blooming career. As the Piper Malibu N264DB went down into the ocean that night, questions started to rise to the surface. Who was piloting the plane? What really happened during and before the doomed flight? Was this really an accident? Who was behind the transfer that was taking Sala from Nantes to Cardiff? Why was an international football player being transported in a plane that felt like it was falling apart? And the most important question of all, who was responsible? Welcome to The Football Files, where we look into the details of football's greatest tragedies, mysteries, and gruesome stories. My name is Adrian, and this is the tragedy of Emiliano Sala. Act one, the transfer, the flight, the vanishing. Emiliano Sala Tafarel was born on October 31st, 1990 in Kululu. Growing up, he had one single dream, to become a footballer, just like his idol, Gabriel Omar Batistuta. He was 15 when a Girondin de Bordeaux approached him. A move to Europe would mean getting closer to his dreams. His mom, Mercedes Tafarel, accepted his move with a heavy heart. He told me that I should let him go, that all he wanted in his life was to kick a ball. And if I didn't let him, I would be killing him inside. Salah did indeed go to France and started his European journey. Up until he joined Nantes, his story was nothing to write home about. But Salah felt at home with the Canaries and achieved the best form of his life, scoring 42 goals in 120 matches. Back at the start of December 2018, he was the joint top striker in Ligue 1, alongside a certain wonder kid by the name of Killian, whom you may be familiar with. So a move to a bigger club in the January transfer window seemed imminent. And by then, Cardiff City manager Neil Warnock was already deep in his search for a striker that would hopefully save them from relegation. And the Scotsman was aided in this search by agent, compatriot, and his old friend, Willie McKay. McKay was the go-to agent when it came to discovering little to lesser known talent in France, but the Foxy agent had gone bankrupt in 2015, and as FA rules disqualified people with bankruptcy orders from being registered intermediaries, he was no longer a licensed agent. No bother though, as he and his son Mark McKay had found a way to get past the paperwork. It was Mark who was doing the official transfer businesses, while Willie acted in an advisory capacity. McKay asked Warnock if he'd be interested in Sala, and according to McKay, the manager said that Sala was already on their transfer list. But first, they needed to see Sala in action. The McKay set up and paid for two flights from Cardiff to Nantes. The first one on December 5th with Warnock, his assistant manager, Kevin Blackwell, and the second when the club's player liaison officer, Callum Davies, went. Right after the Cardiff officials saw Sala play on December 6th, McKay contacted Sala for the first time, and in as short as a few sentences, he made his ambitions clear. There was no place for a child's dream to become like his idol here. It was simply business. Emiliano, my name is Willie McKay. First of all, I tried to reach your agent, Maisa NDA, by call and SMS in the last few days without success. We're not interested in looking after your personal interests, finance, holidays. Babysitting is not our market. We do transfers. To this date, over 600 from Didier Drogba and Anelka to Payet, Siri, and Guisa, a lot. We don't try and cross the player's agent. Some are very happy to work with us. Some get very jealous and protective. With all the shit they say, like he is like a brother to me and he is like my son, in reality, if you are not a footballer, these people don't care about you. They only care about money. That is the truth, because that's all we care about. That's why we like to work for clubs. No emotion, simple business, that's it. In the very same email, McKay told Salah that they had already had talks with multiple English sides, including Manchester, Chelsea, Liverpool, and they added that they think he could eventually play for one of these clubs. Whether these talks had actually taken place or not, this was one of the most tempting parts of McKay's pitch. 
a possible entry to the upper echelons of world football. Although Willie McKay often bragged about taking players or managers with his plane, in reality he was just working with a pilot, David Henderson, who operated a plane for another entity entirely. And David Henderson was actually on vacation with his wife when it was time for Cardiff City FC to bring home their new striker. So as he usually did, when he wasn't available to fly himself, Henderson reached out to a business associate a 60-year-old part-time DJ and gas boiler engineer from Scunthorpe, England. David Ibbotson loved flying and would do anything to get flight time, even searching for flight jobs on Facebook. But Ibbotson's passion for flying was much higher than his skill in doing so. His license to make commercial flights had expired, and he had 23,400 pounds worth of county court violations against him. All that red tape aside, well, he was also colorblind. Even though the owners of the Piper Malibu aircraft warned Henderson and told him that they don't want Ibbotson flying their plane because of the problems he had, Henderson ignored their warnings and gave Ibbotson the job anyway. On the 19th of January 2019, Emiliano Sala flew to Cardiff. The Argentine went to Cardiff City Stadium, passed his medical, signed his paperwork, and posed for the camera with his new jersey. The following day, he was taken back to Nantes by Ibbotson in a flight he described as, quote, bumpy. A flight after which the pilot himself declared his concerns, specifically about the soft brake pedal and oil leakage. A day before the doomed flight, Salah chatted with Jack McKay, Willie McKay's son, and a fellow Cardiff City player. My dad has told me that you're going home tomorrow. He could organize a plane ticket to take you direct to Nantes and to come back on Monday at a time that suits you so you can get to training on Tuesday. Ah, that is great. I was just in the middle of checking if there are some flights to get to Nantes tomorrow. He said he could organize a plane that would go direct to Nantes. How much will it cost? Nothing. He said, if you help me to score goals, it's nothing. <laughs> With pleasure. We are going to score a lot of goals. At about the same time, Salah was chatting with Cardiff player liaison officer Callum Davies too. Cardiff City FC offered commercial flights for Salah, but having already talked with McKay, Salah declined. On the day Emiliano Salah said his last goodbye to his teammates in Nantes, David Henderson's name was submitted to the Nantes airport. Oddly, the flight was delayed for 10 hours. Then a new flight plan was submitted with Ibbotson's name, but the delay meant that this was going to be an evening flight, not the best conditions for a colorblind pilot. On January 21st, 2019 at 7.06 p.m., Ibbotson and Sala took off from the Nantes airport. At 8.16, the N264DB aircraft went missing 22 nautical miles northwest of Guernsey, close to the Channel Islands, sparking an air and sea search. David Henderson was one of the very first people who heard about the accident, and he wasted no time sending messages to his entourage. Ibo has crashed the Malibu and killed himself and VIP. Bloody disaster. There will be an inquiry. Other messages read, This can open up a can of worms. Questions may be asked about his flying. And of course, he was right. There were going to be questions asked. A lot of questions. Act 2. Hope and despair. Shortly after the accident, a race against the clock started. A search and rescue team that consisted of three planes, five helicopters, and two lifeboats was on the mission. But after 24 hours on site, there was not even a glimmer of hope, and the search was called off. The decision to give up so quickly caused a public outcry. With a rallying cry, Emiliano's sister, Romina, started a GoFundMe campaign to fund a private search and rescue mission. Hashtag no dejen de buscar slash keep on searching. The international football community showed support for the campaign instantaneously. And as it should be, the disappearance of Sala became the biggest news in international football. Diego Maradona, Leo Messi, Sergio Aguero, Nicolas Otamendi, Gonzalo Higuain, Laurent Koscielny, Ilke Gundogan, Florian Tovan, Dimitri Payet, and Kylian Mbappe were among the very first to share and pledge support. The target set for the mission was quickly attained, and David Mearns was appointed in charge of the mission. Mearns was an American marine scientist who earned himself the nickname Shipwreck Hunter after solving major maritime mysteries. He wasn't going to need much time on the job to prove that his nickname was well-deserved. On February 3rd, 2019, the wreckage of the Piper Malibu was discovered on the seabed in the English Channel. The possibility of seeing the two men alive was beyond credible, 
and the miracle everyone in the football community hoped for ended in despair. 17 days after the terrible tragedy. The only body recovered from the wreckage was confirmed by Dorset police to be that of Emiliano Sala. The body of the pilot, David Ibbotson, was not recovered amongst the wreckage, nor has it been to this day. Any attempts to resurface the plane was called off shortly after due to the poor weather conditions. There were already so many questions about this tragedy, about the events on the night of January 21st, 2019, that it didn't matter whether the wreckage was examined or not. David Mearns knew that finding the plane was just the beginning of working toward answers. You know, people use the word closure. This is just the first step. It's a long, long way. Uh, but at least this is the route for people, for them to have answers. Act three, the investigation and the aftermath. Before any advancement was made in the investigation, before having the answers to the inner workings of the horrific tragedy, the Sala family was hit once again on April 26th, 2019. Emiliano's father, Horacio, passed away due to a heart attack in his hometown, Progreso, Santa Fe. The mayor of Progreso, Julio Muller, talked to a local radio station and said what almost everyone could have guessed. Horacio could not overcome Emmy. Three months after Horacio Salas passing, Dorset police announced that an unnamed 64-year-old was arrested on a charge of manslaughter by an illegal act in connection with Salas' death. This was none other than David Henderson. A month later, the Air Accidents Investigation Branch, or AAIB, published their in-depth report on the accident. The tests on Salah's body revealed 58% of carbo-oxy-hemoglobin. The report found out that the cockpit of the plane had a harmful level of carbon monoxide prior to the crash. A note from the report read, a COHB level of more than 50% in an otherwise healthy person is generally considered to be potentially fatal. This once again revealed the fact that the tragedy could have easily been avoided, and that due to the heavy level of carbon monoxide in the cabin, the two men were probably deeply unconscious before the aircraft had crashed. While the Sala and Ibbotson families and everyone in their circle were going through hell, business was business, and it was running full force in the background of this immense tragedy. Willie McKay was probably right when he first reached out to Sala. This was all about money. When the two clubs were deep in their dispute over the payment of the agreed upon transfer, the Sala inquest wasn't even finished. Nantes FC was demanding the 15 million pound payment, while Cardiff City FC was arguing that Sala needed to sign additional papers upon his arrival before officially becoming their player. Nantes FC were also questioning Cardiff City FC's involvement in the arranged flight, including their deal with agent Willie McKay. All the while, Cardiff City FC's chairman, Mehmet Dalman, was talking about certain principles. As chairman, I'm the guardian of this football club, and I have to do what's right for us. Do you know, even if we had 15 million pounds to spare, we're willing to throw money away, my decision would not be any different. There are certain principles we have to act upon. As FIFA ruled that Cardiff City FC needed to make at least the first installment to Nantes FC, the Bluebirds took the case to the Court of Arbitration for Sport. And, as of today, although the hearing took place in March 2022, the final decision hasn't been made public yet. One year after the crash, Dorset police dropped the manslaughter charges against David Henderson. However, the Civil Aviation Authority, or CAA, charged him with two offenses under the Air Navigation Order. One, acting in a reckless slash negligent manner, and two, being involved in the commercial use of the plane. On October 28th, 2021, Henderson was found guilty of endangering an aircraft at Cardiff Crown Court by a majority verdict of 10 to 2. The judge presiding over the case, Judge Foxton, said that Henderson intentionally breached CAA regulations for reason of profit and was, quote, reckless, not merely negligent. David Henderson is still in prison, where he'll be spending a total of 18 months. But the Sala family's legal battle continues on, since starting on March 10th, 2021. The family is pursuing legal action against 13 parties over Sala's death, including Cardiff, Nantes, football agents Willie and Mark McKay, and the company that owned the aircraft. 
Regardless of the outcome of legal proceedings, the tragedy of Emiliano Sala has already revealed many of the shortcomings of international football business practices. And without a sliver of doubt, what will be left behind when all the dust has settled, that is, if it ever does, will be nothing but a devastated family and a young man's dreams and life stolen away. But it goes further than that, as everyone in the world now knows that this horrific tragedy could have been easily avoided. That will do it for the very first episode of The Football Files. We'll be back soon with another story that managed to shake the entirety of the footballing world. Be sure to let us know what you think about the first episode in the comments below, and thanks for watching.